why in the world would anyone want to go back to India? I know that most of you, I mean, the postdocs I'm particularly talking about, you all are coming from the top labs in the world, right? Why would you come back to India? And uh, th there are actually, you know, numerous reasons. I know all of you would kind of, you know, know that there are many, many reasons for that. Uh, although we all keep on asking, you know, we, we ask others and we ask to ourselves. And as I think uh, I read this particular article, which was probably written by uh, Vijay Raghavan long back in, in Nature magazine, wherein he said that every question about India has two correct answers, and they both are in, you know, opposite directions. So don't ask. Probably, you know, you should just listen to your own uh, heart and go by that. Okay. Uh, there are many reasons. I mean, uh, you, you stay close to your relatives, the climate, uh, you know, you want to raise your kids the way you kind of, you know, grew up in India. So you want to come back for that. But the most important things, you know, thing that kind of strikes is the opportunity, which definitely uh, both Jitu and uh, uh, Ron highlighted. And I think there is one more point they highlighted the responsibility. I think it is the responsibility also, right? The opportunity is there, no doubt about that, but it's also a responsibility. We need to come back and do something for this country, which kind of, you know, put so much money on us when we were growing here. And I feel that that's a very important thing. And no doubt that we have, you know, the biodiversity, the kind of, you know, research that we can do here, we can do nowhere else. So there are certain, you know, special things that we have here. We can get our own niche and do, you know, the best research. Okay, so uh, I will start, you know, from the scratch, from the time when you really have to choose the place, you know, and, and the time when you should choose it. So I would say that, you know, uh, uh, most of us do that when we are, you know, on the fourth and fifth year of our career, uh, you know, we, 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 we uh, post docking career when we start thinking about, you know, setting up our own lab. So yes, that timing is very, very important, but it is important from two different angles. One from you know, when your CV as a package is ready. I mean, when I, when I say package, I'm not talking about that high impact nature or science paper. It is not actually like that. You, you, I'm, I'm talking about when you have kind of you know, assembled the, you know, the impact factors as well as the techniques so that you, can, you are in a position to ask a very important question and you have the expertise to answer that. That's the time when you should kind of you know, think of coming back. And then you have to time it in such a way that you apply to an institute which has a position ready for you. And it, it actually happens. And this type of meeting definitely helps you to choose that because you, you would have seen several people coming and you know, talking about these many positions, these many areas we have. But there will be somebody sitting in that corner who thinks that, yeah, this is the particular one you know, I would like to go and apply. And that also happens. And it, it would have happened to some of us uh, between me, Sam, and Jagreet. We, we all attended YMs and we are here. Okay, and then, you know, the location. You know, location also has several things that you would like to consider, uh, but don't just look at the infrastructure. During this uh, meeting, as well as when you go f as, as a faculty, you know, interview, candidate interview, you look at other things. Interact with the young faculty, the other, the old faculties, see whether you can you know, get into that institute and you can get that niche that I was talking about earlier. So consider all the aspects. And uh, if possible, you know, you should actually tie up with people uh, here whom, whom you meet, the representatives, the directors, see if you can visit the centers, not as a you know, faculty candidate. You can even visit just to, to, for the sake of visiting, see how the place is. And, uh, you know, ultimately at the time of application, prepare your package the, you know, pack it in such a way that you are able to highlight what you have in you. The cover letter, the CV, the write-up, the vision, all these are very important. It is not the impact factor, I can tell you. In most of the good premier research institutions, it is not just the impact factors that are counted. And as I, as I said, if you're lucky, you, you, you attend a YM, and then you all are actually lucky that you are here. This really helps. I attended the Bhuvaneshwar YM, and uh, you can see me sitting there, and. Uh, Ron was there, of course, and uh, I joined RCB. In my case, I you know, personally wanted to kind of go to a place which was kind of near to Delhi. RCB fulfilled that thing. And then uh, I chose RCB also because my interaction when I visited as a faculty candidate, it was you know, very, very good. I, I really liked the, 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 the faculty I met. Uh, I felt that you know, it will be able to give me the infrastructure that I was looking for. We started off in this uh, rented building at Gurgaon uh, five years back. I mean, I started off there, and uh, now we have moved to the main campus. And I'll tell you 
show you the pictures of the new campus as well. Okay, so I'll come back to that uh, original question, the, you know, uh, the life of a PI. <laughs> okay, so there are, there are two different things, the life, this life of a PI. Um, you have to basically, you know, balance number one, exactly the way a parent would deal with the bad report card of his kid. In the same way, you have to kind of deal with the bad report card of the data that sometimes your student might show, right? You have to deal with it. You have to troubleshoot it <laughs> exactly the way a parent would do. Suddenly, you have to get into that shoe. Exactly like Ron was telling that, you know, you, you can, when you are a postdoc, you can just go back and tell your mentor that, you know, it's not working. And then you, don't, you really don't think about it, what transpires in the PI's mind. Now you have to suddenly do that. You have to suddenly solve that problem and you know, get into that thing. So this is just a symbolic thing I drew. So if these are different stages, MSc, PhD, you see that every time there is an energy barrier adaptability jump that you have to take. But suddenly you see that that barrier is double when you transit from a postdoc to a PI. So be ready for that. OK. So the, the, two, the balancing thing that I was talking about, so one was you know, taking care of the students, the scientific thing, be you know, upfront. You have to kind of have the good questions and all that. I will talk about that too. But first, the bureaucratic processes. Because you all come from you know, the best labs, the places where you know, things can be done quickly. If you, you want a reagent, you just you know, uh, tell your boss, get the credit card, order it. Next day, it will be on your table. Here, we don't do like that. It is not so easy. We have lengthier processes. There are, there's, there's a reason for that. So uh, you know, the suggestion that I, uh, this is from my own experience, is that don't hate these processes. Learn them, if possible. And there are, you know, <laughs> learn them. Uh, uh, so, and you will basically learn also way out. So I, I remember, again, this discussion once we had with uh, Vijay, when Vijay said that don't break any rules. I mean, he said that much before he became the uh, uh, deputy secretary. He said, "Don't break the rules. Learn it and try to get away. You know, get around. And you can you can still bypass and you can do things. It's not that you cannot do things without breaking rules. So so you you'll have to learn that. And for that, you know, you'll have to kind of you know go to the extent of even reading uh, this. You know, the Swami's book, which is a is a is a book that basically gives the you know benefits for uh, central government employees." Uh, so that is one end, and the other end is you probably will go and read the uh, CSIR manual so that you follow the GFRs and you know, buy things in the, in the way they should be. So with all that, sometimes you know, it takes about one to three months to get a simple reagent like an antibody. Uh, you know, it can probably take about the same number of three to six months to get equipments. But what I have learned is that in the, in the first two years, we were always cribbing about it. We were just not liking that thing. We were thinking that you would come to a wrong place. But then, you know, slowly you learn how to deal with it. And you also learn, you know, to somehow plan things a little bit ahead of time. Maybe, okay, maybe we will not be able to match with the, with the best labs in the world when it comes to timing and doing all this. But I think we are, we are, we, the, the planning part, we are better off than everybody else because we know that we're going to take three months to get a reagent. So many times, you know, even before we plan the experiment, we have to call the student, discuss everything, and tell them that, you know, tell me all the reagents that you need. I will order it now itself. And by the time you are ready to actually do those experiments, probably the reagents are there. Now, so that will not be the next day, but it will be two months later, but you're planning for that. So it's not bad. We can, we can, we can do that. And then there are ways to get you know, uh, sometimes when we really need it, we also kind of you know bypass all this. We order it, tell the vendor to give the thing free of cost, maybe for the time being. He will do it, and we we do the experiments. It's not that it doesn't get done. So uh, uh, you know, uh, and then another thing is that you you will be put. They, they will place you into multiple committees: purchase committee, equipment committee, this committee, that committee, academic committee, and that actually you know again is irritating to start with, but that's how you learn the processes. Okay, the other part now, you know, the, the mentorship. So this is actually an article I, I, I saw in Nature, which is a, it's a beautiful piece of article. I mean, we all think that we know this, but we actually don't know. There are a lot of things th that this article tells being a good mentor. Okay, so there was actually a survey that was done long back, and then now there are competitions that are held in the European uh, US about, you know, good mentorship. 
And this article actually has a compilation of the best of those applications which were probably shortlisted. So what it tells is that, you know, for example, so this is the mentor and this is a, uh, the disciple, uh, the, the student. And uh, so don't basically, you know, compel him to say, write a greed. <laughs> Convince him. <laughs> Tell him why, why, you know, he should do that way. Okay. If you see him going into the pit, kind of, you know, stop him. Be a cowboy. Pull him back. Otherwise, let him go. Give him the freedom. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, the journey is such that you have to kind of push him and then first get him, let him go into the water, jump into the boat. Don't let him go alone. <coughs> and then another thing is, you know, ultimately when things work, when it comes to limelight, it shouldn't be that, you know, he is down and you are here. It should be the other way around. He should be at the limelight. And, and, and this will help. When you do all this, I'm sure there will be times when they will also do that. They will also go that extra inch and, you know, do that thing, you know, extra for you and that's how probably you are able to do the cutting edge thing. And of course, you know, you have to also teach them to kind of, you know, do the record keeping, SOPs, and all these things, whatever we kind of talked about in the last five, seven minutes, all these transitions would have happened at the, in the first year of your, you know, time in the new lab as an independent PI. Okay, so now the, the main thing, you know, the, <laughs> You come to the lab, you know that there is a starting startup grant that your institute gives. In, in case of RCB, uh, we don't have a startup grant check, but what, what uh, we have is that they will ensure that you're functional. They will make sure that you know, if they are hiring you, they will hire you only if they can afford your science. So they will make sure that your lab is running, so that they will do. But then you know, after a couple of years, you have to definitely sustain that. You have to keep up with the pace of what your lab's requirement. So the best thing will be the moment you, you know, become a PI, also start thinking about your funding. Okay, so set your research goals at that time. One of the things that I learned was that the way you frame your research question should be in this way. So if you are basically, you know, traveling in an airplane and you want to basically, you know, focus on this area, that's the zoom out area. That's your research question in a zoom out form. So when you offer it to the grant agency, you write the grant in such a way that you show this zoom out picture, that is the, you know, the big picture, but then the question should be such that you're talking about the eyes of that rabbit that was sitting here. So you basically should be able to cover this entire spectrum. You know, show the big vision and also have the ability to frame the questions in a specific manner. And if you can do this, I mean, this is a very, what you call, symbolic in layman's language way of putting the things, but it could be done for a RAS pathway or a P53 if you follow the same, I'm sure it will help. Okay, now the other thing is getting the first student, or you know, any student. Don't think that you know, the, uh, the, you get into the lab, you want working hands, you want the workforce, so you know, get whoever comes, it shouldn't be like that. Spend the extra energy, interview them, uh, you know, involve in the shortlisting, have, you know, you, you, you should actually talk to people. If, if possible, you know, talk to seniors. Yesterday we were discussing uh, in, in, uh, in the dinner table uh, and, you know, it was suggested that, you know, it's, it's good to have a couple of senior people in the committee so that, you know, they, they definitely they would have learned something from their experience. Have them in, in board. And, you know, if you are able to get that first student, if that first student is good, your kind of, you know, lab culture will be set in that way. And I was fortunate to kind of have Smriti, who actually sits here uh, as a YI, uh, as a postdoc in this meeting. And uh, Smriti definitely had, I would say, all the ingredients uh, that it takes. She, she actually uh, graduated from NII, so she was trained in a good lab. And then she definitely, you know, has, the, you know, she was hardworking, meticulous, and she's done pretty well. Okay. The phase two challenges. So this is basically around the second and third years. So whatever I talked about so far was, you know, the first two years. And now when the two, second to third year, when you transit, you will see that the lab is up and running, experiments are working, but now you need to do little more challenging experiments. Um, I mean, there are diff thousand different ways you kind of are thrown into such a situation. I will just share one situation wherein, you know, uh, I'm a host pathogen uh, biologist, and I needed desperately to do uh, in vivo experiments. And RCB does not have a animal house. I mean, at that time, it was kind of very far away. Now it's almost getting ready. But we didn't have an in vivo system, uh, you know, that we could do in RCB. So, I mean, it was to the extent that I even thought of doing zebrafish, hydra. I mean, I was ready to do anything, but I wanted to do the in vivo uh, model. But it didn't work, because when I tried uh, zebrafish, they said that, you know, 
you're going to do an infection, uh, we can't give you our system. So Hydra, you know, I don't know how to use Hydra. So, so it, was, it was a lot of confusion. Finally, you know, somebody suggested that, you know, why don't you outsource? Uh, why don't you check NII and NBRC? It didn't work. Then someone said, why don't you outsource this? It was actually Shashi's idea. He said, you outsource it, go to, uh, you know, Pune. There are uh, private companies that can do it. So I basically tied up with, uh, uh, you know, this place called Intax, Intox. And when, when I spoke to Intox, they said, yeah, you can do it. And then finally, when I told them the experiment, they said that, you know, if it is Salmonella infectious model, we can't do it because we don't have, IV, you know, individually ventilated cages. So what I did was I didn't stop there. I again contacted Shashi. Shashi tied me with, you know, somebody in uh, uh, Iser Pune who has a, you know, uh, individually ventilated cage. So, you know, we hired the cage from them, transported the cages to Intox. I sent one student from my lab to Intox. She spent some seven days doing just two rounds of animal experiments. Every animal tissue was transported from there to RCB. We did the sectioning, we did the lysates, and finally we got the experiments done. So, you know, you do face challenges. But I think you should not stoop down. You shouldn't think that you, you cannot, uh, uh, you know, go ahead. You, you should just kind of, you know, somehow solve the problem. You, there are problems, definitely, but it is solvable. There are people who are there to help you. I mean, I got Shashi, I got, you know, people from Intox who were ready to uh, kind of, you know, do this way wherein they, are, they were ready to transport the cages. So similar thing can be done. So don't, don't be afraid. All experiments can be done. We, we have other colleagues here, Sam sitting. He goes to America and does his experiments when it comes to in vivo experiments. So it, it is possible. Yeah. Uh, so then, you know, I will, I will now go from the third to fourth year. That's the time when, you know, suddenly you see that you hear people saying that, you know, the the clock is ticking and you, you need to start showing some productivity. Um, so, I mean, this, this cartoon very nicely depicts that thing, you know, when you are ready for the publication, you send it, it gets rejected, <laughs> right? And, you know, there is another thing going on in your mind at that time that, you, you know, you want to basically make it big, you want to send it to a big journal, but then how long you're going to wait? So, again, you know, exactly like the timing of your application, the timing of your first publication or any publication is very important. It shouldn't be that you're only thinking about the impact factor and you, you're only thinking about the very, very upper bracket journals. I think it's, you know, one of the things that I learned is that it's very important to kind of put an end, put a full stop to stories. You should learn to kind of make small stories also. Uh, while the bigger ones are going on in the background, they may take longer, but there should be something to, you know, give back to your students because their timing, they're, they're going to leave in, say, four or five years. So be prepared for that also. It shouldn't be that you're only thinking about those big journals, big papers to come, okay? So you should be sensitive to the requirements of the students. Uh, and as, uh, as I said earlier also, the publications are tough and the first publication is the toughest. So don't be afraid of that. You're gonna get several rejections. We got many, many rejections before we got the first one. So after that, I mean, around the fourth year, when we were already sending our uh, uh, paper, our manuscript, and it was getting, going through the rounds of rejections, we also kind of, you know, used that time probably. It was lucky that we started packing, and um, we moved to the new building, uh, the permanent campus. This is a picture of the permanent cam campus, wherein uh, this is RCB, and here is THSTI. Uh, we have our animal house right here. The auditorium is here. It's a, it's a very, very, very good place. It is an isolated place. Sometimes we get, you know, we get the feeling that we are in no man's land, but I think it's okay. I mean, we can do very good research there. Sci scientifically, it's very good, well-equipped center. All right. So in the new campus, I, I, another one small little story. So um, we suddenly realized after going there that it, 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 there is a big, big, uh, you know, uh, problem of monkeys over there. So they, <laughs> they just, uh, and, and uh, since the building was almost half empty, there were, you know, uh, windows that were kind of kept open or whatever. We, one fine day when I came to my lab, this is how it looked like. The monkeys had actually entered the lab. They didn't know how to go out. And um, they had actually, you know, they must be hungry. So they uh, emptied every, uh, you know, biohazard dustbin, whatever we had, everything. They even took out media from our fridge. And it was all thrown, you know, it was all over the place. <laughs> but then there is a solution for that also. We actually hired a langur for this <laughs> to, to combat. <laughs> and it actually, this, this guy sits uh, morning to 24 7 and he gets paid, I think it's about 20,000. I mean, the, the owner of this gets 20,000 per month 
Uh, and then once you have a langur, it seems then you cannot <laughs> have monkeys anymore. <coughs> so we, we got over that too. <laughs> so I will I once again say that, you know, there are problems, but you can definitely kind of do good science still. Yeah, so with that I will end. And I will also kind of, you know, uh, say this, that, you know, follow your heart, uh, but take your brain with you, and you, you can still do good science. I have to acknowledge all the people who are there throughout uh, my entire lab, my collaborators, the, f the funding agencies, and of course my family. Thank you all. <laughs>